thank you everyone for coming. No members of the public at the moment. Uh, we'll start our parish council meeting. Apologies and reasons for absence. No apologies to anyone here, and um, I haven't heard from <clears throat> All I've got is that Councillor Shilton, when I saw him on Saturday, did say he might he would come tonight, but he may be slightly delayed because there is a um, briefing for ward councillors on teams tonight, which he is attending in Ham Street, and he will come over to us as soon as that's over. Declaration by members of any interest, pecuniary or other than. Spot any mm -hmm. obvious ones? No, so no need for declarations. A reminder to everybody that the meeting is being recorded for publication on YouTube. Uh, we won't adjourn the meeting for a public session because we don't have any members of the public presently here. If any come later, then we might be able to do it then. You might consider the space in front of the churchyard wall as a declaration of involvement seen as a church for them. Okay, I mean, you're right, it doesn't mean that you have to leave and it doesn't no. stop you speaking no. on it under no. the code of conduct no. because it's not pecuniary and we take a, uh, a common sense approach to that in the code. We don't uh, yeah. send yeah. everybody out in the rain for no reason. Yeah. Right, um, so to confirm the minutes of the last time, um, has anybody got them and they're all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you, I think you told me that you got John's declaration and sent that off, didn't you? I did. You did. And you I did heard from Ashford Excellent. that it is now on Ashford's website. Good. Mm. Good. Perfect. Okay. Um, right, there'll be a few things to think about as we go through maybe. But, um, anyway, can I sign the minutes then? Everybody? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. please. Yes. Thank you. Well, it took them a while. They told them about it because I sent it off and they said they would let me know when it was on. I think it was last week. Right. Yeah, it's the 13th. Good. Okay, thank you for that. Um, matters arising, there are two listed here. The safe entrance for pedestrians to the War Memorial, uh, an update on that. Yvonne and I composed the answers to the questionnaire they sent us out so that they would know what to talk to us about. Uh, it went off probably a month ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Nothing heard. Um, I mm -hmm. Right, I've just got my notes here. Email to the to conservation governments, to planning help, to ask them, and they came back with, I should ask conservation. So, at Ashford. So I did that. Um, I had from them, I got a question, um, question and answer thing that they wanted to send before they could help us any further, which uh, Chairman put together. I sent that off in reply. I didn't get any from that. It was a different email address, so I then copied it to, cons to conservation at Ashford again, it's different, slightly different. And um, nothing back from them. And I chased it again on the 1st of February. Still nothing. I passed it to, I passed it to uh, Johnny, and he said he would take it up. But I've heard nothing from him either on it. So it's been sent twice. I've chased it twice, and Johnny has taken it up, I understand. Nothing whatsoever. Okay. Well, uh, we'll you hear what comes. That's on the advice... Of them? Y yes. They said to do it. Oh. Yes, it's to whether we, what we need to do. That's right. We're trying to find out. Put in a, whether We're trying we need to find out what we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, John... Um, if that's something you've got in mind ground or about whether we discussed, well, I suppose we discussed it last time, this is to do with the stones and the flags around, or slabs around the war memorial on the paving, which is um, sort of crazy paving of 
thought to be recorded on the listing of wheeled and stone, whether it is or not. It doesn't look like most wheeled and stone. It sure. looks like really strange stuff. Um, but it's quite bumpy and slippery. And we took the view after um, a, a near accident at um, uh, Remembrance Day in 2023, where I nearly killed myself. And the curate said that other people were slipping that day as well, and the previous year when he had been there and I wasn't, he said people were slipping. So I suggested that it's our responsibility, we, we have a de facto ownership of it, <coughs> so we ought to do something about it, but it's a listed structure. So we've asked Ashford if we can you know, have a discussion with them about what we should do. They've said, send us the answers to a questionnaire, we've sent it off, and a month later, plus, no answer. Yes. Yeah. So we are where we are. What we'd like to do is simply pull the paving up and repave it, while also we would already decided some months earlier than Remembrance Day that we would break open the back through to the field, take a hole, make a hole in the ditch so people could come through without walking around on the bend in the road where the riders could get in one over. And they told us we didn't need any application for that, but this one, they're just but hopefully it will come through and we can do something about it before next year. Yeah, I, I mean it's a situation where, again like when we were looking at the other day where the interests of the village are obvious and straightforward and sure. could be managed without involving Ashford at all, unless sure. one felt that there was a risk. I mean. You know, what could they do if we were simply to undertake a sensible reconstruction? Um, There's a lot of sense in that. The trouble is that it's not, it's not even just the ordinary planning issues and the conservation area issues, it's an listed building issue. Yes. And, you know, they, they make work out things that don't need it. We're not, we're not going to abuse the memorial. It is unfortunate, as the architect um, uh, Greg has pointed out, that it is act the paving is actually mentioned in the listing. It's not listed for the reasons of the paving, but it right. mentions the paving as part of its context. The context is always important in the listing, but it's not safe, really. Probably hasn't been ever, but things get more difficult with people falling over, and as it would be, and, I, and to be honest, I mean, I know you could say <coughs> that, but silly managing to, to slip. I didn't trip, I slipped, mm. uh, it was wet. But um, it slopes slightly. Uh, but the um, um, the risk is that if you fall in those circumstances backwards, which is what I would have done, it can be fatal. Well, I, I would consider that an overriding reason for getting on with the job mm -hmm. and yeah. rendering mm -hmm. it safe. We made that point that that's what we wanted to do. And, and the oddity is that the thing that we're actually going to really change, they said, get on with it, that's fine, that's fine. just you know, do that. Mm. Even though Yvonne said, you know, it is listed, no, that's all right, just get on. Whereas this bit, which is just replacing, will be different. It's fine. It's mm. just buried in the, in the park. But I think, you know, my own personal feeling, prejudice if you like, is working from home is making whatever was a problem worse. Well, they're not there. I mean, you can't move no. papers around. They usually, I know they'll say, oh, working on the screens and all the rest, but how much is? Anyway, that's where we are. That's just a bit of an aside. Okay. But that's what that is all about. Mm -hmm. Bus shelter refurbishment update then. Um, Yvonne, you've had it confirmed that Knights are doing it themselves. It has not been done by the Yes, yes. I do remember we, we, we asked that question. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. And he replied all the time, but I've now got it. And he's actually got the quote now, officially. And we have a start date of the 4th of March. Okay. And that's coming on letterhead now, you say? Perfect. So what we've said is, Yvonne and I, and uh, I hope everyone else is on it, we've mm -hmm. got to reply writing to that and, and make any points we want to before he starts. Obviously, we're accepting the quote. Uh, they're responsible for anything to do with health and safety. Um, that they've had a spot that they've agreed with, you know, and that they are only asking to be paid at the end, aren't they? They don't want stage payments. There's nothing in there. They're, they're big enough that stage payments wouldn't be an issue for Did you say like Did you say night? It's night. Jim. Jim, Jim night. Mm. Jim night. His firm. They're the only ones who actually came through a project. 
Um, so, and Dad Hillock, I mean, he's going to build our new house, you know, and he's well, worked we'll on our house interest. and stuff. He's, um, he's, uh, he's well established. Well established, local. Yeah. Mm. Knows his job. And, you know, I, I was wondering when we were talking about select lists, okay. um, probably someone you could rely on in general to drop quotes in. True. It's true. Um, well known and long, long established. Yeah. Um, the, um, what are you going to say about that? Um, you know, I delay the start of the draft until March, do you? Yeah, I think that, that oh yes, the, they talked about the delay. It is, it is an expensive job, that, um, we know that, and we've gone into it as a council knowing that it's quite a lot of money, but we ought to do it, we decided, and we could not get anyone else to quote. Mm. So, in those situations, what do you do? You either don't do it or you buy the wood, and that's, just, that's what we decided to do. And this is where we, um, Johnny said he would be prepared to um, look at it. I'll bring this across. I said that. I have got the application form. How much do we want to ask for? Hmm. Well, um, we've already had a thousand out of me, I think, last time, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, last year's allowance. <coughs> uh, we were waiting to do it and couldn't get the quote. Um, I go for at least another thousand. I mean, I think his grant is at five thousand for the year, isn't it? I don't. I think they've been cut like that. Oh, they might be on two and a half or three. Well, I, I've asked for the same as Mick did last year, yeah. and we can always go. Well, down. if he says well, less, Johnny said he was going to do something, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's what yes. he was going to reply. Yes. yes. And yep. he was also he said he was also going to talk to um, Mike yeah. White. Yeah. Like, I mean, he may have got an answer, but we haven't had it. Well, he's hoping to join us yet. Yes, so we is. might find out. Then. Okay. Do, we, do we have to put the amount on the application form? Yeah. Do we need to agree amounts? Well, I think we can we can aim then, as Paul has said, if people are happy, we can aim for a thousand unless when he comes he says, no, I've only got 500 left or okay, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they have, both Ashford and Kent have cut the numbers this year. <coughs> I mean, they might do just have that 25,000 and think it's going to a relatively small amount now. <coughs> okay, can we go? Um, planning applications. The land below Oxnail Barn. This John is the. Uh, everyone else has heard about it endlessly. This is the one where oh, okay. they want. Sorry, have you done it? It's before my time. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell him, I'm glad you said that. I was trying to remember what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> it is a chap who, with his wife, owns a barn conversion. Over at, is that what we call Ham Green? Or is it different? Is no, it's, it's still it's Moon's Green. Edge of Moon's Green. Green. Yeah. Where we walk past sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he owns the barn and he owns a field next to it. And down towards Metcalfe's farm. And he wants to replace, uh, add a, a new bungalow in the field, sell his existing barn conversion to someone else to pay, with it, pay, pay for it. And that's partly because it's what he'd like to do. It's partly because he feels he will need a bungalow because of his declining health. This is Mr. Alan Butler. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he applied to Ashford ages ago. And they said, using their policy, uh, you need to put it to the Ashford Design Panel, which is a group of basically architects, I think, those sort of people who get convened, you have to pay them to do it. So he did, and they convened and looked at his plan, <coughs> which was to put a bungalow in well south down his field towards Metcalfe's. They made comments on his design, one of which was to know, move it up towards where the existing house is and change it in various ways. So he got all that redone by his architect, and it went in again. And they said, no, we like these other changes. We went there three times, we are told. Yes, it was. It. I actually went, you went well, it, was, it was during COVID and it was done on scenes. Yeah. And I got invited at Park yeah. Parish Council to mm -hmm. sure. not necessarily take part, but to listen to what was going yeah, on. Sure. And yes, so it was two you know, quite lengthy meetings, say, they put forward what they wanted to do, the architects putting forward. 
they um, listened to it all, then they went off, and we had to wait while they had a little chat, and then they came back and said what they thought. And that happened twice. On the third one, I didn't actually get invited to, but that's where they actually... They said they were happy. happy with it. Now, what's happened is it's been moved up to near his bum, but across a bit so it doesn't sort of occlude the view out the back of the bum. <coughs> They've shuffled it around a bit. They have broken up the roof. So instead of being a big roof, it's a bit here, a bit there, and then, you know, it sort of pokes in different directions to break up the massing, as these people say. And they put in there, no doubt, solar and insulation, a bit like John and all the rest of it. And the design panel said it was all right. We had a meeting here before your time then, evidently, where um, some people came along and didn't like it much. There were a lot of people with objections. I did look yeah, there were a lot of objections online. They didn't all come to us, right. but some did. And the big things that we picked up here were there was an anxiety about them building near the lane, which is slightly sunken. Would it sort of fall down in the lane and would it affect the ditch? which alters the drainage down at Metcalfe's. So we, having discussed it, we supported it. We recognised there was objections. We recognised that, oh, and by the way, this whole thing of the design panel is a special clause in the NPPF, National Planning Policy Framework, where the government says, essentially, you don't normally build new things out in the country, but you can if they are of architectural merit in terms. Exceptional. Exceptional architectural merit. And Ashford's response to that is to say, well, we'll have design panel to decide whether things are of merit. And the interesting point about that is that it does not exclude AONBs in any way. In other words, you can have architectural merit in an AONB as well, or national park, as well as anywhere else, according to the MPPF. So it went to the design panel. We said, look, we're not fit to you know, second guess that. They said, it's fine, that's fine. We recognise that. We recognise that it doesn't look like all the other houses around there, which are all traditional tile, mm -hmm. and all the stuff. But we also see that it says it's supposed to be architectural merit. It's not supposed to be a copy of one that was built 200 years ago. And there are these objections that are being made, and we think that the planners need to take them into account. But otherwise, it's up to the planners to make the balance. So we were trying to have it always, of course. The planners very quickly said, we don't like it, in effect. It's in the countryside. It doesn't match the other houses go away. Which I think yeah, was... They said it wasn't all the things. Yeah. But they've got a design panel that decided it met the requirements in terms. I don't so, think that actually in the end means anything. No. Actually. I mean, I, I did talk to David Hall not that long ago, because he lives in the house next door, which overlooks. And I said, what do you think about it? And he said, well, I don't like it. And, um, but anyway, there's absolutely no hope of getting any sort of approval ever because it's outside the village envelope. So I'm entirely relaxed about it because it won't go ahead. He was. Yeah. Well, I mean, outside the village envelope, you see, you come back to the underlying point here, Alan, and, and we'll come to what we've actually got to think about today in a moment. The NPPF says you don't normally build out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm fine principle. However, we make exceptions. This is how we make exceptions. And then, you know, they say, oh, well, it's outside the ability envelope, so you can't do it. So is the government giving guidance to local authorities saying you can do it? And it is a, the NPPF is a material consideration in making planning decisions. It would certainly be um, a one-off, wouldn't it? Or, you know, it would certainly be a surprise to the village if it did go ahead. Well, that's because that's their attitude. I mean, by the way, they say, how can you possibly have a house there when it's out in the middle of nowhere, apart from the six or eight that are in a line going along from it? It's not as though it is in the middle of a field with nothing around it. It just happens to be the last one on the end of the line. Although, as Yvonne says, it's not quite in a line, it's around the right angle. But anyway, the, the decision for us now, just to move on, is are we going to put in a, it's, it's appeal to the refusal. So are we going to put in anything on the appeal or not? We don't have to. If we were to, my feeling would be we just say, in effect, um, we supported it before. We still do, if we do, of course, if we do. And um, uh, in effect, 
uh, you know, we recognise the issues that they have to consider, but the design panel had supposedly been there to yeah, yeah, yeah. to put on uh, to put out of um, contention whether it mm. fitted the place or not. It was a split decision, if you remember, at this committee. Was it? And we voted. And you voted against I it. I did. You did. How many others voted against it? I can't remember. Don will tell you. But, but does that matter? Because it's a council decision. It's a council decision, ultimately. Yeah. 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 Just in case... No, no, you're right. Just, just in case we said we approved it last time, so we're going to sweep it through, we probably should no. take a vote again. No, I, I don't mind that. I don't yeah. mind no. That's why I'm saying the business for tonight <clears throat> is whether we're going to put in anything at all. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we can't undo the fact that we supported it. No. The question is whether we're going to support it at the appeal. The, the inspector, if he does his job, hope he does, should read what we said last time. The question would be whether we add anything to it by saying disappointed. That, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the planners were always entitled to turn it down. What I think it, to me is an affront is that they picked the one reason that they were on the least solid ground. Yes. Can I just read out so you all know the refusal reasons? The proposed development lies outside the settlement boundaries of any identified suitable settlement within the Ashford Local Plan 2030 and will give rise to unsustainable new homes in the countryside, contrary to the adopted spatial strategy and without any overriding justification provided to support this form of development. The proposal is not a dwelling of exceptional quality or innovative design as set out by the application and so does not satisfy the exception criteria of policy HOU5 or paragraph 80E of the NPPF. As such, this form of development fails to accord with policy HOU5 of the Ashford Local Plan and the aims and objectives set out in the National Planning Policy Framework. The development will harm the intrinsic character and qualities of the site and surrounding countryside and fail to conserve or enhance the landscape and scenic beauty of the High Wild A or B. The proposal would therefore be contrary to policy ENV. 3B, the local plan, and the aims and objectives of the National Planning Policy Framework. The, and in a way, I mean, that bit short is saying no matter what the Ashford Design Panel says, which we set up to look at that particular policy, they, architects or whatever, don't know what they're talking about, we ain't having it. And that just, I think, is, is another point of being outrageous. From the I, I don't see it like Ashford that. View. I, 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 think, I think this design panel has been set up to try to make decisions more valid and more mm -hmm. sensible, and they, it doesn't remove the need to disagree with them sometimes. And, 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 and I mean, I, I would propose that we don't say anything. Okay. Well, what do you think, think, John? I mean, I've seen one or two exceptional places that have gone through. And I've also seen them featured in Country Life or whatever. They're nearly always cons large, impressive, really significant one-offs. Um, and I don't know the site, but I'm very surprised to hear that anybody thinks of something like that in the context of some traditional building very close by. Mm. I mean, I envisage uh, a site, yes, in the middle of nowhere maybe, but that's where it's creating the impression. Why? In a way, if you see it juxtaposed with traditional, it immediately offends the eye. I think probably. I mean, I'm just talking the abstract. Sure. Yeah. But I, I think probably the planners are right on this one. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's not a sufficient, extraordinary one-off merit to get through the planning system, and the poor owner has presumably been misled. Well, they've spent a fortune on it. Yeah, and also, if if that's the case, and I, and I understand the point you make, I understand the point Alan makes, but in effect, if that's the case, then the Ashford Design Panel has not been given the correct and necessary terms of reference. They've been told just, you know, what would you do if you were given this as a design? How would you titivate it a bit? Rather than you're only being brought in and paid for. I mean, uh, what's his name has said, and it probably includes the cost of all the applications and that, but he has said to me, and probably to you, it's cost him £50,000 so far. That's mm. the, the, the lower end of it. Yeah. 
well, the appeal on top went out. And I said, your appeal, obviously. And he said, well, it's more money, even. I thought we said at the last meeting that we wouldn't take any, we wouldn't extend that information we've already supplied. Okay, is that what we said? Yeah. No, I, I don't say that. Oh, okay, no, we didn't then. I think we're on safer ground in this particular one, saying nothing. If people don't want to say something, that's I mean, fine. I'm a little uncomfortable with that, and I'll tell you why. It's, 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 it's the whole issue of having something set up in the design panel, it makes a complete mockery of whatever we might think of them. Sure. This particular, it's not as though he, he went and, and, and they got turned down or whatever, you know, it's, there's been a lot of toing and proing and toing and proing. I, my to. own view is, is that we should say uh, what we remind them, what we agreed last time. Um, I have a particular difficulty in this village with, with when people say the traditional design, no disrespect to mm. um, because if you go down most of the streets here, there's no such thing as a standard. British home design at all, and there are other houses down there. Uh, and I think that, that if, if local, if because the money to set up the design panel was public money. No, I think it's all paid for by the fees. Yeah, of this guy. yes, I know, but, but, someone, but they would have, someone, someone in Ashford, there would have been a cost yeah, to sure. set it up. And unless they come back, what that smacks of to me is, a, is standard paragraphs. There's nothing tailored to that particular mm. property in the plans, and I think it's a disjoint. And uh, I, I personally wouldn't see any evidence here that says I should change my mind on how I voted last time. But I think it's important that Ashford and the planners recognise that parish councils take an interest in this. And we should just reaffirm and say, if that's what we decide, we should reaffirm and say we see no reason to change our, our support, our council support for this. Just to remind them that we're in the mix. Just one thing, it's going to the inspector. The inspector will read what we've already put. Who's supposed to? Anything? I hold my ground. I think we should say nothing. Right. Can we then just have a, uh, a, a vote, if you like, which is, first of all, do we put in something to the inspectorate or do we put in nothing? Who's for putting in something? Paul? I think Susan? we should mention about the design panel. Anything else? I think I need to. I'm well, out of this, I'm not, on the fence me, not right? having experienced the application. Where were you, the moment, Colin? Say. You're on a no. John's on a no. I think we should stay as it is. Alan's on a no. Do and not say Sally. Anything. Well, if the inspector's going to read what we've already written, and I read that stuff and it's quite comprehensive, why would we need to say something like this? It was really, and I, and I, I mean, it, it is a presumption in a way, it was really to say, as, as um, Sue just said, mentioned Simon had, it was really saying, yeah, they've just turned it down, notwithstanding the fact that the whole thing that's been done so far is opposed to the view that they took and that the other side of it is supposed to be more expert. It's a bit like, and I, I, I don't want to go too far with this, but it's a bit like, court having an expert witness and then the barrister says well that's a load of rubbish don't take any notice of that I know much more about blood stains than he does you know that's what's happened of course that happens all the time no they, they, they say it but they're not taken account of as an expert the expert is taken as the expert mm -hmm. they'll question whether the expertise was right but they don't just say well, I don't care about that did it go to committee or was it the planning officer decision planning officer it's just the planning officer. I think, wasn't it? Um, I think yeah. So it didn't. I mean, I'm amazed at that. Delegated. That, delegated. I'm, I'm amazed at that level of expenditure and the toing and froing and everything that just ended up on the desk of a planning officer at the end of the day. And I think that's why we've got the standard paragraphs mm. built stuck in front of the fire. I think that body's been set up, and Johnny may have a view mm. on this, really to try and make their decision making more accountable. Rather than <laughs> as as well, it's a bit of an own goal with that case. It is, isn't it? It's just, but then yeah. we're used to that. Well, we didn't used to have a design committee. No, but then that's taken the high bind. Yeah. Okay. Well, well the planning committee. It was planning committee. It was oh, planning committee. It went to mm. committee. It went to committee. So, um, mm. job for the first day. Mick called it in, and I had to. I got a phone call from someone said, do you still wish to call this in? I said, well, I don't know, I'd like to read it first. Um, so yeah, we took it to committee, but it wasn't you know, successful. What you've missed, and thanks for coming 
uh, mm. after your hot foot from your other Zoom. Um, what we've been discussing is whether we put in anything else to the inspector apart from our original submission, because and there's a difference of view here on the uh, around the council. Um, the point being that the planner, sorry, the committee with the planner's advice turned it down essentially opposing their own design panel, which was supposed to be considering whether it fitted into MPPF paragraph 80, I think it is, for exceptional design, etc. And, um, and they're saying, well, we don't think it's exceptional design. Well, the design panel was set up by Ashford and this guy had to pay for it three times yeah. until they were happy that it was fine. Three, and, I think, is a record. And, and the, on that basis, either they're wrong in my view, but others take different views to say, well, we don't care what the design panel says, or the design panel didn't actually know they were supposed to be judging it as exceptional, in which case the terms of reference they've been given by Ashford when they were first set up is wrong. But no, they wrote that was mentioned or not, right. exceptional. They knew it was exceptional. Yes. Okay, yeah. well, that's, that's fine then. They leave on attended one of them. Yeah, they benchmarked against um, other properties which had been deemed excep exceptional in some, but what the design panel appeared to be looking for was not the things that they benchmarked as exceptional, which felt slightly like moving the goalposts a bit late, if I was honest. Sure. Um, the design panel, if anything, should have known what that criteria was. Yeah. I, I think it's time to move on, to. I think we've done this Okay, one. well, we've heard... Um, John's uh, advice on how it went at the committee. So what we've got is so far that um, Colin didn't want to do anything, John didn't, Paul did, Sue did, Alan didn't, you I think were didn't, no. and I sat on the fence. So it's, it, we won't put anything else in there. We'll just leave it to go. I do think though that, to be honest, this is my view anyway, and, and a couple agree with me, this is Ashford. Um, setting up a system to deal with government advice and then deciding when they don't like it, they'll just ignore it. They also, and I mean, I'll say it, even though we're being recorded, Ashford made a big zero of this application from the start to oh, the whatever you think of it, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Could you say that again? I didn't quite. I said, I said I, Ashford made a big zero of this application right. from the start to finish. Um, uh, even when it was turned down or an officer was turning it down and there was an issue with the officer asking the officer to investigate the banks, uh, which involved themselves. Um, I mean, just really. Okay. What a mess. All right. Okay, let's move on. Alan's um, getting to it. Mm. Yeah. Um, consider further the plans to extend the cemetery. Um, there are a few issues coming here. Um, I went with uh, Johnny on Saturday when he was uh, in here having a surgery to uh, show him the, uh, the outline of the cemetery so he could understand what we were trying to do. And then John, because he's new to it all, uh, came on a walk around with Yvonne and I yesterday to understand what we are doing. Um, where we've got to now is that we, we know exactly what space we were given by the mallets. We've had advice from uh, the, what used to be the AONB unit, but it's now the National Landscapes Partnership or some name like that, uh, um, sort of ecology chap, to uh, advise us on what would be a good thing to do there and on the fact that he believes we should be able to get some grant aid towards the fence and the hedge and how we should do that. There are standards for that. Um, I have been taking advice from a supplier, not the only supplier, but a supplier on what we can do, should do, or whatever else about making the paving, um, which would provide a, a all-weather path or track or whatever. Now, if you recall, down the existing cemetery, we've simply got a, a, a turning circle and then an all-weather path going down the centre, which was made many, many decades ago, presumably dug out, filled with some hardcore uh, something type one and stones on the top. 
it's getting a bit muggy now, but that's how it is. <coughs> when we were first in the position of being offered the new land, which we had to access from the cemetery, then I had a meeting with the last bishop, Bishop Trevor, on site um, to ask his views because we were wondering at the time about whether we needed a faculty to cross the cemetery. He said, no, um, don't worry about a faculty. You're doing maintenance, but you've got to keep it very shallow. You know, not going digging. And, and he suggested the idea of having these grids with stones in. And at that time, my feeling was that would be, um, that would take light traffic. Um, in the new part of the cemetery, I assumed that we would do a more conventional track. A bit more digging, because we could, and we'd lay it rather like the old one. Having discussed with a supplier of those kind of things, those kind of um, products, uh, in the last week, a couple of times, um, they manufacture a system, if you like, uh, and specify a system which is definitely proof you can drive on it different different depths for different weights of vehicle you can definitely drive on it it definitely spreads the load uh, because there is a question of the trees along the side there um, with whatever question you want to make of it um, but that would need uh, digging and it would be quite big and expensive as a project. Um, the question then is, are we actually on for doing that much? And indeed, if we were digging to provide a root protection road by the trees, are we doing more to the trees than if we didn't do it at all? Because the digging is, is an issue. Um, now, Yvonne, in between council meetings, came up with an idea which was to say, well, okay. Uh, oh, and by the way, they did say, if you're going to put vehicles over it, you really do need quite a lot of material. Now, we can't put that material in, in the cemetery anyway. And any vehicle that goes down the new bit has got to go through the old bit. So that takes us to the idea of possibly saying no vehicles at all outside the current cemetery. It's, it's foot only. Foot, beer, bicycle, wheelbarrow, nor bicycle for this purpose. So really, we're saying, OK, if we only put in a light track for pedestrians, light path for pedestrians, we don't need very much. OK? It's easier, it's cheaper, you know, less digging, which of course takes soil out, it's got to go somewhere. But you wouldn't get vehicles in there. But on the other hand, if you can't get vehicles across the bit of the cemetery to get into the new bit, it's not an issue. And we can't dig down in the existing cemetery because that's not within the, the agreement we got informally. Now, um, I've spoken again to the technical manager at the manufacturer that I've been talking to, and the answer from him is, OK, for a pedestrian path, then their product that goes at the top mm -hmm. of what is normally a much bigger deal is fine, it will work, but you are entirely dependent on the soil you're putting mm -hmm. it on. You take the top off, <coughs> put it on the soil, but the soil will tend to move and your path will move with it. And because you've got grids, they, they will move. So it really is a bit of a kind of at our own risk, but this would be grid and stones. Oh, and a bit of um, grit sand underneath. Take, take the top layer off, put a layer of uh, quite gritty sand underneath it, then put your grid in, and rather than filling the grid with pea gravel, like you can sometimes do, he said no, quarried, sharp quarried stone, because that actually gives more grip as well. Mm. And then it really depends on how good the soil underneath is. Now the soil underneath is pretty pretty soft and, and I assume that we would having taken it's been um, ploughed and harrowed and mulled before 
we would probably take the top off and lower it again, um, and then lay this on top. We couldn't be sure, but um, I mean, the, the, our problem, by the way, it lets water through. Oh, I, I should have added, underneath the grit, there will be a geomembrane, geotechnical membrane, which keeps the, the sand from disappearing into the soil. Yeah. It keeps it separate. Um, I, I personally don't find this a difficult decision, in that we've been burying people in the ground around Wittisham and throughout the nation for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And we've done perfectly well without unnecessary hard sanding. And undertakers will need to be told that they had a curse would sink up the axles as they drive it over there, but otherwise it's up to them to get the coffin into the right spot without doing that. Of course. And they would have to find a way. Yeah, we understand that. We don't need to get ourselves worked up about having a hard standing to support a hearse. It might at the very no, most not a hearse, that once just a year. People, just feet. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, some sort of, you know, minor adap adaptation for people to walk across, but nothing very much, really. Nothing very much at all uh, to go down to support heavy, heavy vehicles. We, no, we, we, we don't need that. We can't do that. that. We should, we, we can't yeah, do yeah, that. I know, but I don't think we should even be considering it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining, explaining why that earlier plan touched. is no longer on the table. Yeah. But I mean, I'm relieved at that, because it struck me as a massive expenditure for no very good reason. You can bury people in the same way that we buried them a thousand years ago, and I'd prefer that. Well, true. But on the other hand, for the last 125 years, Wittisham has provided an all-weather path down through the cemetery. Yeah, that, that's enough. That's all we need. But we're not getting that, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not being clear enough. Yeah. You will not get that. You will get something less than that. Yeah, well, less than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, what we've already got is enough, in my opinion. We've got that half down a little. And then, we're not getting that. But no, it's already oh, there. No, I mean in the new sandwich. No, we don't, we don't want that. Okay. I, I don't want it. Okay. And we, Christian Fuggle has uh, six heavies who would be able to carry a coffin if necessary. Sure. And maybe in their way. And, you, and you just need to make sure they're, you know, they're fit and strong. And they'll, Okay. Can we, I mean, I, I'm a bit confused about this, I have to say. I, 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 to me, I agree with the idea that we don't need something for, for vehicles to go down. That mm -hmm. last bit. I mean, you know, for those, I'm not quite sure, two or three thousand years back, but uh, we do have a, a old but very serviceable beer in the corner of the church, which is one way of getting a coffin mm -hmm. to... to in the church, is it not? No. Same difference. Same. It's the beer. It's, it's, it's there. It sits in the beer house. Oh, does it? Oh, right. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the, the beer? The beer. The, the, the beer. The big wheels. The, the beer is there somewhere. It's in the church. It's in the church, isn't oh. it? Yeah. It's not the church. It's, it's to the left of the church. The left hand side, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank heavens for that. I thought I, just, oh. I thought I was staring it's at something that didn't exist. Anyhow, the point of it is that's a way of getting a coffin to. Well, that, yeah. that hasn't been done the path, but yeah. when, when, you, when you get off the hard standing in the old cemetery, yeah. then it, it's on your shoulder. Oh, to absolutely. Sure. So, so my, my question is, if we're going to open up another area for graves, you know, <coughs> uh, maybe I'm missing the obvious here, but to me, just to have a pathway of the same capability of people walking without sinking into the mud and the beer being pulled down to the room when it's stopped and then carried on on the shoulders. Yeah. Isn't you know replicate what we've got at the moment? That's what I'm trying to explain. It yeah, will only but, 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 be but replicating if yes. it's but, that. But, it will be but, something to stop people walking on the mud. There would be at least yeah. a sort of a stone thing. Yes. But how robust it will be in weather in the country. People, are, uh, people are really, I think, quite sensible. <clears throat> if it's summer, they'll come in their nice smart shoes. If it's the daylight today, actually, they'll, if necessary, they'll come in their ways. But what's, and, it, what's and, to stop us having an extension of what we've got at the moment? Because we have to dig, and we can't get it across. So the you you can't, can't, can't. There are graves under the opening that goes across. The, well, this is just for a walkway. Yes, we can't have a walkway. We can't. You can't dig we down. We can have a walkway. Like Dividing, we're only doing something in maybe this depth rather yes. than this we, depth. But we, but we don't actually need any more than that. We just need. We only need something like that. We don't. It doesn't need to be a fancy arrangement. Well, I'm with you. That's it's, where we've got to. It's basically a way of digging holes and putting coffins. But also the digging down, down bit. What's, what's to stop us doing that, given that... Because there are the graves there. Well, after 100 years, it's all open season, isn't it? No, no, no I don't think it is. It's consecrated. 
It's well, I think you'll find that you can actually, after 100 years, you can apply to dig up all the graves. Well, that's different. That's different. That's different. But we're not applied to do that. With, with, no. with a faculty. So, and the advice was, don't even think about asking for a faculty. Right. Well, that was dear old Bishop Trevor, and that was five or six years ago. I, 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 I think that, I take your point, we just, what we just need is a pathway so, that people in reasonable shoes can walk down it in all ways. It doesn't what we're to trying to get to. It so what's the, to be, what's it the obstacle? It doesn't be a robust pathway because mm -hmm. if you think about it, we're only having four burials a year, probably. Probably <sighs> four a year. And so, so what's the stop? It, what's getting the in the way at the moment? That's a bit... I mean, I'm being well, I, what I've tried to do with great <laughs> lack of skill today is to move councillors from where we were, were to where we are now and explain the issues so that yeah. you are informed now, having got to the point where we know that we can put in a shallow path, feet only, not necessarily hugely robust, but the best we can do, firstly, we have to decide that that's what we want to do, and secondly, we have to decide about exactly how to put this to our friends at the Ashford Planning Department in order to get a change of use, and if necessary, but we hope not a planning permission for the path, we hope it doesn't need that. I'm, I'm not even sure we need to do that. I mean, my well, you want to have a change of use, otherwise you're in farming, unless you're farming mm. bodies. Well, look, I mean, I think we need to secure the, the triangle we've uh, secured from the mallets. We need to secure the triangle, possibly with the, the, um, the farming for the protected landscape grant application, sure, yeah. which I'm hoping we're going okay. to agree to go ahead with. And then, that's that. And then if we decide afterwards, we need a hard standing. Okay, I, I, and then I, we can decide that next year or in five yeah, years' time. If that's what people would like us to do. Personally, I don't. Do. I don't think we do need that. that. If people like, if that's what people like to do, then that's what we can do. However, it is entirely possible, and I try to think ahead. It's entirely possible that planners will come back and say, "What about the trees?" Now, the answer, the genuine answer, the common sense answer is those trees have been living there while tractors are running up and down forever. Yeah. But that is not the same as them saying, Yvonne always says they've got a tick sheet and they go through and they say, oh, what about the trees? What are you doing? And then you start saying, well, well what are we doing? Well, indeed, except that we can double think that a worked up tree officer at Ashford, mm. or we can just hope for the okay. best. Right. I, I would propose the hope for the best okay. situation that the tree officer doesn't get worked up. Indeed, well that's fine, I'm hoping he doesn't as well. Are we happy then that what we will do is simply, I'll continue researching the path, but if people want us to just put in for a simple change of use for cemetery and see what they come back with. If they come back with, yeah, change of use is agreed, Yvonne will point out she had this talk with them years ago, um, that's fine. Just don't send it to the design committee. No. <laughs> we won't send it to the design committee, no. I mean, it may be for another parish council to decide in the not too distant future that look, the, the new the new cemetery is too soggy. We've got to do something. Let them decide it then. I don't think we need to decide it now. I don't think we're going to be burying anybody there for a bit, to be honest, until we filled up the old one. It's all my fault. Okay. And I, I, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. That's all right, Alan. Are people happy to drive? <laughs> Having had our walk on site and got some idea. Uh, what I'd like to see happen as soon as possible, subject to the change of use and um, Alan's clever way of hopefully getting some more money, I'd like to see the demarcation of what we're actually getting because you stand there without really. I know we've now got a nice little drawing from Well, well hopefully we've got from Tobias Jackson what he's proposing, and you've seen yeah. that. So if, yeah, exactly. So if we can mm -hmm. run that almost alongside or get it almost set up ready you yes I've got that yeah. 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 I'm just looking at the John shoulder so to speak I tried to print some to bring with me and for some reason having photographed it it all came out blank I didn't know why and, and are we expected under the terms of our gift anyway have we got six months to put the fence up or any well no we've had it for four years we, we had a short period about four or five years. years. So we, we had only a short period, it was about six weeks or something, but we're not actually using it as a cemetery, so we, and they've never complained. But sure. we've got to put the fence up before we start to use it, for sure. Yeah, so, so we, what I'm hoping this evening, we're going to make a decision to go ahead on that, and then we can revisit the hard standard. 
if we want to, but I don't think we need to actually define it now. Um, well, what, what a change of use. Is there a cost implication? A little bit. Yes. Mm. So if they refuse, what's a little bit? Mm. Well, they won't refuse it in the end because I oh, think I made this. We you know, we discussed this. They're going to stop. Where are they going to ask us to bury people? You know, it's just the registration fee, isn't it? We have to pay. The registration fee. Yes, we get. Yes, it's half. There's a fee. The it's not. An, it's not a massively expensive. You know, <laughs> no, it's something we well within our. All right. Well, and what they what they did before when we weren't because they were pushing for this tree protection area, and this is where we do well, what we do. It took a while. They came back and said, "Are you going to better to withdraw it than have it refused?" So that's why it was withdrawn while we rethought. Yeah. But now we so think it's just better to go ahead. Well, it, it, Alan's view is instead. Well, it's asking for change of use and. The, the reason we got into the trees was because they started saying, well, you can't, what are you going to do about the graves near the trees? And Yvonne said, we're not planting any graves near the trees because that's where the track will be. Oh, well, yeah, the track will stand. damage the trees. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how we got into that whole yeah. business. Mm-hmm. If we now send it in for change of use, Yvonne would probably reasonably assume that they'll come back and say once again, well, what are you doing with the graves? It would be lovely. I would be delighted if Adam's plan worked. Well, just say that we're not going to renew the trees yes, until we return the train. No, we wouldn't put Yeah, no, I trees. think Alan's right. I think we don't say anything about that. Go for change of use and then cross the bridge. So we're not actually going to put in the track. We no, might exactly. put in a path. The path. path. Put in the track. I, mean, I, don't, I wouldn't mention that at the moment. We we know. Know. No, get the change of use. Well, get, the, get the fence up. Well, we're, certainly, done. we're certainly not putting vehicles in there. So the first answer, of course, as Yvonne and I have already discussed, is. We are having no vehicles in there. This is fine. We can what we want. We don't want vehicles in the cemetery. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's perfectly able bodied men to carry coffins, so we, we, don't, we shouldn't have them. Can I just out. ask, is everybody satisfied that Eva will put in a change of use and then we'll find out what they come back with, if anything? Is everyone on for that? Yes. 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 All right. For and it saves us a lot of money, too. If, if you think so. Um, secondly, are we um, keen to progress, because we've got to do it at some point anyway, progress the grant for the hedge and the fence? Let me just put in a proviso here. If we get the grant for the hedge and the fence, or if we actually expect to get the money, we've got to do it within a financial year. At the minute it looks as though it would be grant approved sometime in the next few months have to put the hedge of the fence in by about November. That's your and Charlie's advice. Now, if we've got to put that in by November, we need to have done anything in terms of getting material in to lay that path before that, because you don't want to be bringing all that in across the cemetery if instead you can ask uh, Mr. whatever his name is, Mr. Appleman, to let us bring it in through the gate. Yeah. Well, we also need the change of use yes. approved. Of yes. course. Oh, absolutely. It's got to be yeah. done. And you're mm. right, it'll take time as well. Mm. Well, hopefully it can be done this year, getting the materials in, so that then the fence can put it. Otherwise, with, with, with the types of weather we get around here in the soil, we're going to be talking about not being able to do this until 2025. Well, it's self evidently. Yeah, exactly. So I think we should see... But I'm just saying on. that if we put in for the hedge, yeah. then we need to be... Well, can hoping we hoping that we will get the path through? The how, how quickly could we be expected to see a change of use? Something like this. I mean, any planning applications either 8 or 13 weeks, isn't it? We said we don't want to do it. Should do, I mean, it's an easy one to clear. Yeah. Well, I think we should get the planning application and hopefully it's done within that time frame and then we can go with the, the hedge and the what's it in, in tandem. We, we, by then, We've decided what sort of path we need and we get the materials in before that. You won't be applying for that at all. Yes. If we, we do won't. if we do if we do a path at all. Yeah. Well we, we seem to be drifting back and forth. We're heading now in the direction of not don't have anything in the way of a path. That, but, I mean that's up to other people, it's not for me to that, that, that's my feeling is that we get a change of use, mm. yeah. we get the, the grant application in with farming for a protected landscape, and we then think about the path. Why we've done that. Well, you've got okay. to get, if you're going to do a path, yeah. and I know you may not want to, have, you do not want to have a path, Alan, 
But if you're going to have a path, you need to have that lined up before you plant the hedge. You won't put the application in for the hedge as far as I know until April the second or April the sixth, whatever it is, whichever version they have. It is. Um, it is possible that the type of path we might in the future decide to install would have to vary, bearing in mind we have now fenced off the new cemetery. But that doesn't worry me. I think we would go with what would be possible at the time. Well, that might sound a bit carrying, radical, you'll, you'll but if we fence, it, fence off the new path, is it at all possible? If I, if I was a sort of the farmer or doing this, I think, well, maybe I might put a gate part way down the, the, the fence, so that at some stage in the future, if I need to get through the fence... You'd have to presumably get permission from the mallets to do that, but I would think it's unlikely... I don't, don't think it's unreasonable to say, we've got a fence it's here... It's what we've got in Could, transfer, that's yeah, true. Well, that, but, you but know, for instance, if you look at the current metal gate. fence, you know, the current metal yeah. fence, yeah. there is a gate yes. in it. Exactly. Yes. And, and, I mean, that's never been opened, but yeah. it's there. But it's there. And, and I think we want possibly the same... Yeah. Because that would give us flexibility. There isn't a gate within that yes, there is. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you know the metal fence, it goes along. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, it's not actually a gate, a swing gate, but there's a, there's a thing that it's detachable. And it's actually in that metal fence. It, it exists there. Where's that? I think it's down near the Chathams. No, it's no. It, no, it, that's it, on it, the it, other side. That's the, no. that's the other Oh, you're talking about the other side. Yeah, we're talking about no, the if, other if, side. If, if you go into the cemetery, onto the gravel, gravel yes. path, and then you veer left, and there's a sort of space between graves, and you go straight over to the metal fence. That's ours. You know, the, that's the, ours. The, 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 the one that the one that's that because we, we took that out. It's yeah. just in there. Yeah. There's a, there's a gate there. There's a gate there. There's a, there's a detachable, I looked at it just the other day, there's a detachable opening. It's never been opened. But that's because that's we took it out to take the trees out. The, the way, where we've got the gap, where the trees, we, we made a gap. So that, because Alf goes in to mow that grass. So he made it so that he can take that panel, move that panel. Yes. To go through, but it was never there before. Did he make it? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, that's fine. Well, well but it's there. there. It's, 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 not it's, 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 it's not unreasonable it's, 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 to say, can we have a gate there for, for future? I mean, that's the sort of thing I can suggest to some Tobias if we yeah. go back to him, yeah. and then I can talk. Yeah. We, and then that and gets over the mallets and problem that, I think that, that we've got to turn it down. Yeah, it gets over the problem of, of being constrained then, on the order we do things. And then in the future, if there's some desperate reason to get yeah. either a, a coffin in or some gravel in, then we can get it in that way. Yeah. It would all be very handy, Alan, and, and good for you that you would get that out of the mallets. Perfect. It would be very helpful, but it isn't in the transfer that we've got. I'm quite sure we can get it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Otherwise, just bear in mind that you'll be carrying the bucket to move probably right. 10 tons of sand. Fine, it's just a, a, a little Sunday afternoon working party by the Paris Council will solve that. Mm, sure. New school project, sand moving. Okay, can we, I, I, can we just, let, let's just sum up. Uh, Yvonne yeah. is going to put in a Ten change months. of use, with least said soon as mended. Um, we know that we will be councillors agreed that it will want to put in for the grant for the hedge and the fence once the um, um, period when you can apply for the next financial year comes in um, and um, at some suitable point Alan will be talking before we plant the hedge Alan will be talking to the mallets about getting that approval for a an access and then we'll have to figure out how we do it is that agreed by everybody Yes. Yes. Good. Excellent. Well, Yvonne, if, if, if it's all right with you, it would be best, I think, at this point, the instruction came from the secretary. Clock. Clock. Please. The clock. The clock. Not the secretary. This clock. The secretariat. Which instruction? In, 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 embraces the term clock. Which instruction? To, 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 to Bias and to Charlie to proceed with the application? Oh, well, it, it, it will be a question as to when it has to be put together because, I, as I understood it from them, it's next financial year. But it, I mean, Charlie will want to start working on it now. I mean, maybe, yes. Indeed. And on that point, there is a charge, I understand, which we yes. need to agree to. We have yes, to inform him, we need to minute that. And do so, know what we, it is? if, for instance, we instruct Charlie Reeve to formulate the application, and if it goes in, and if, and 
the, the, the view from Tobias and Charlie is that it's a very strong application and it's very likely to be accepted. But if, on the other hand, it was turned away, Charlie would still need to be paid. Yes, that's what we need to agree. That's what we, need, we spoke we about before. It right? belongs we all understand that. And yes, we need to that the you international the right council can understand I tried to get. Yes. Yeah. How much? Um, it would be certainly a lot less than a thousand pounds. I mean, I, if you had, if I had to guess, I'd say six hundred pounds. And the grant itself, we did find out I mean, how much get, it was. We get several. We get four or five thousand, I think. Three or four, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe four. You can't persuade to go on a success fee. <laughs> yeah, no, no win, no fee. <laughs> I mean, it, it would be possible for somebody here to put their hand up and say, don't worry, I don't mind doing all the work, but I don't want that job. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I think, and he knows what he's doing. He does know what he's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just, do we need to agree that to go ahead with it? Please. Right. We need to agree that we're going ahead and that we will pay him that sort of less than of 600. Yeah. We'll ask him how much it will be, obviously. I, I, think, I think if it's successful, then it's well spent. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that's chances of being unsuccessful are quite small. Yeah. I mean, that's yes, in, in, in the big picture, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, your first uh, job, Alan, I think, then, is to find out um, how much you would ask for. And to confirm well, that might the application actually goes in after April. Inquire. You might do a choir of Charlie when you do that. Can you give me a list of the book? And I'm not doing this until after April. No, you're finding out where, if, mm -hmm. if it only goes in after April. It, there's, there's two stages to this. Alan has pointed out you have to start working on the application, hmm. but it will then go in, as I understood it, after the beginning of the year. That's my understanding too, but I think Charlie would start to work on it now, okay. and it would be reasonable to ask him what his costs are likely to be. So that's, the, that's what you have to put in But he did informally say what it would be, and now you're sorry, that's just gone. Okay, it was five to six. That's what he originally said. And then he would come back to you with a definite for. <clears throat> and I think also if you're sending to Tobias, ask him the practicalities of having a, gating, a gated area. And we have to decide whether we want metal or chestnut fencing. I thought we'd already said metal, but maybe not. Did we decide that before? We haven't agreed no. that form. Okay. No, we haven't. Okay. Well, I, mean, I know some felt chestnut, and I was one of those. Others felt metal. Okay, mm. who's, who's for chestnut? I am in principle. John yes. and Alan and Paul. Okay, who's for metal? Four. Okay, it's metal. <coughs> metal for the longer life, more sustainable. If there's going to be a gate, <coughs> that's just slightly delicate, isn't it? I'm not sure. Metal gates less attractive, but whatever. No, I take your point. I take, but on the other hand, the one you've been talking to us about is metal as well. No, it's <coughs> yeah, it's metal. Okay, well, I'm perfectly happy with that. that. Mm. But you have to I'm with I don't. I, I don't know how they do the, the gate. He wasn't allowing for a gate because it was going to be a solid fence. Uh, I tell you so what. You're going to ask Charlie how much it's going to cost. Tell you what, there is an issue, Alan, that you haven't considered here. Mm. <coughs> this is. This is supposed to be a continuous hedge as a wildlife corridor. You put a gate in it, you put a gap in it. I know they can bounce. Well, no, that's why you were going to ask Tobias whether it's possible to get yeah. okay. So I had been considered that. And, and he may say, no, you can't, which yeah. is fine. Okay. We don't really need it, actually, but it would be safer to have it. If we don't need it, then we've got to think of getting stoned in earlier. Okay, can we move on? Yeah. We've done that more than <laughs> to death. Right, 80th anniversary of D-Day, um, this light of peace, Yvonne circulated it, we haven't in the past done yeah. these things, um, that doesn't mean to say we wouldn't this time. We have talked in the past about whether we have a place for it, if indeed we did do it. Well that's the beacon we're talking about, that we yes. didn't have well, anywhere the beacon indeed, indeed. This, uh, The alternative they are mentioning, instead of having the beacon, is to have a lamp, which you could then use on future occasions. But it has, still has to go somewhere. So Yvonne, can I just say something? Yvonne, thank you very much for sending that through. It's a really extensive document. Uh, and I'm not looking for a gold star here, but I thought I'd better read it in case, in case, because you, you can't look at it in part. And a couple of things that struck me, first of all, it's not just about the parish council. Okay, we have a very active British Legion branch in the village. I was actually 
down at May's house, where my father resides, at the Royal British Legion home, and to my surprise, in came four, five people from Wittisham. Um, and, and Tony Bullock said, oh, I'm glad you're here, you can take the photograph now. And I had a clue what he was talking about. And they were there to present a cheque for £1,000 that they, they raised. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it makes sense that what are they doing, what's their involvement, and, and, and what have you. The second thing is there's a piece, uh, there's an opportunity for... There's a national bell ringing, I think, at 6.30 on the 6th. Um, and so we have a very active bell ringing, uh, what is it, team they're called, um, or group in, 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 in the village. Um, and I think it's about getting others involved to make that, that decision. Um, we have a village green, I understand, and the suggestion by the central organisers is that the beacon is on the village green, which could be an interesting... Uh, Experiment. But I think the most important thing is that we should involve the people that are mentioned or certainly alluded to in, in that extensive document. I did mention it to Tony Bullock when um, this first came out yep. some time ago and he had no idea that anything was ever was actually happening. Well, it hasn't, the 80th anniversary hasn't happened before. No, but the fact <laughs> I expected that we'd been informed, I yep. did expect the British Legion to have been informed. Yeah. But they're not. But he wasn't aware of anything. I did hope to see him last Thursday, didn't actually mm -hmm. come to the conference last Thursday, so I haven't been able to um, ask him whether they've had any new thoughts on it. But certainly, that because that was my thought, what are they doing yeah. before we start mm -hmm. talking about what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Because the originally they were talking about having like a fish and chip supper oh, country wide, weren't they? Yes. Well, that's, that's what happened also in that well. document because yes. National yes. Fish yes. and Chip Day yeah. 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 Yes. has been moved forward 24 hours. Oh. <laughs> Pay attention. Right? <laughs> I'm <laughs> to, not sure to the chip shops that to the 6th of cut, June. But <laughs> right, well, exactly. You get our orders in quickly. Mm. Well, Stone managed to do their fish and chip suppers very effectively in their village hall, so maybe we should ask their advice. But, but it's being moved forward, and that's in recognition with uh, the, all the small boats yeah. that are involved and, uh, oh. and, and, and what have you. And having a very good friend of mine whose grandfather took one of his boats out there, you know, I know a little, little bit about that and, and what have you. But I think, I think it's about raising the profile of it. Are we going to be committed to that? We've got to do something. As a village, it'd be a bit sad if we didn't do anything, mm. particularly with the bell ringers, and we've got an active Legion branch. Mm. I think what we should be doing is, is, is sort of um, saying that the, 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 the parish council is not just the people, the group that's got to organise it all, but that we would help support and fund it. I'd be disappointed if we didn't get a request from the Legion for some sort of small grant or support. That's why I was sort of hoping to gather the information. Yeah, so, so maybe, maybe, has Tony seen the, the booklet? That, because that's, that does explain well, it's the I would have thought they would have done well, uh, yeah. come through yeah. from the central office yeah. or whatever, mm. surely. Yeah. I mean, also, Roger, Roger King is the person who does their sort of article and their PR, so Parker. I don't know whether he's seen. No. Okay. Mm. He, he writes the bit in our Yeah. Right, mm. um, well... <coughs> um, the long and the short of this seems to be that it's pivotal, really, that the British Legion pick up their end of it, which means that Colony or Roger or somebody needs to have found out what's going on and can communicate to Elon that they're, they're keen to do something, in which case I would have thought that we were quite happy to support and to work with and all the rest of it. The lamplight of peace... Uh, is, if that's what they're doing, whether it's with a fish and chips up or not, the lamplight of peace is fine. And we have to decide, either ourselves or the British Legion, where it will go, because mm. presumably it will be the, the, the centre of the um, celebration at the time on the 6th, at 6 or 7 o'clock or whatever it is. 9.15 is the lighting of the lamp, 6, mm. 6.30 is the bell ringing, and I guess this fish and chip supper comes somewhere in between. <laughs> so it can be on the village green, quote unquote, or it can be on the um, the memorial garden, logically, yeah. or it can be in Carnation Field. Or possibly, dare I even suggest, on the sports field? Sports field as well, yeah, true. It's pretty central. Maybe, yeah. Hmm? Very much, I wouldn't like it. I think having it on the sports field, Alan, as you suggest, is a really good idea. 
No, I think it needs to be somewhere. Yeah. But the point about it is, is that as a village, we come together. It's a sort of the middle of the, the, the not middle of the summer, but it's the weather should be better. Depending on how many people are going to be there. I, I mean, the benefit of the sports club, of course, is that subject to the club rules, they can serve um, refreshments. Um, the benefit of the memorial garden is that it's the memorial garden. Um, the benefit of the coronation field or the sports uh, of the village green is it's bigger, as of course the sports club is. Well, also, if you speak, I mean, I suppose the village hall was potentially got a part to play because you could actually have some of the memorial gardens and then set up the temporary license and have some sort of here, yeah. celebration in the village hall. That's, that's good for actually. Especially if we don't run the risk, sorry, we wouldn't run the risk of it then being rained off because we'd have somewhere. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be a booster of sports club coffers, wouldn't it, if it was there? Well, if it was there, yes. You know, we could have it as a, we could suggest it as a fundraising event for the Legion or something like that. Get them interested in, in, in that. They're very good on, on their fundraising, yes, indeed. Okay, do we need a decision? Well, Yvonne's got to make some inquiries again, really, with British Legion, mm. uh, maybe Sports Club, maybe Village Hall Committee. And, and the Bell Ringers. And the Bell Ringers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 All right. And maybe have a word with Paul Hutchinson as well, because he seems to. He's, he's pivotal. Pivotal. Sports and Club and Sports Club and, 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 and uh, British Hall. And potentially the village. I don't know if he does the World Bush Legion. Logically, you would think he would, I, but I'm not sure if he does. He is part of it. He's okay. Well, he's got a few in all the past, then. Okay. But the, the decision here really is that we're supportive of doing something. It's a matter mm. of finding out what. Consideration of the space fronting the churchyard wall. This has just come up in the last uh, week or two. Um, for anyone who's not aware, Roger Keane took a tumble or, or a slide or something. Okay. No, that's not that bit. That's a different about The car park. This is the car park. This is the car park. Oh, okay. The, 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 oh, okay. It's Late. separate. All right. Okay. This is, just, this is the big space, not the narrow strip. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Good point. Um, the, the open land between the curb and the um, brick path then this is. Um, there is a question, uh, there has long been a question as to who owns it, if any, well someone owns it, everything, but who owns it, uh, what they want to do with it, um, whether the parish council feels that it should um, make um, inquiries as to whether we should actually take it over. Um, that's something that's been bounced around in the past, I've raised it in the past even years and years ago. Um, what do people think? I mean, we know that it's used for parking on. Uh, we don't have any other parking space. I expect it will continue to be used to park on. Does anyone have an interest in it? Yvonne has found old papers. Mm, yes, but no, what I looked up today about the con conditions on which you can claim legal title to the land. If the land is unregistered, the individuals must show they have treated it as their own for 12 years without the legal owner's consent, then no application needs to be made. But we don't know if there is any, but it'll be unregistered almost certainly. Oh um, yes, well yeah, I think we've already found that out. The we question the KCC is, KCC did in the past say they, they didn't own it. Well, you see, this is this is one of those ones again. Not it goes, it went, it went way back when, yes, they did, and then all of a sudden this was brought up. Again, and they said no, they didn't. But that's when they said that historically, the part they did. Yeah. But we've also got part of the fact that it is, it was. But that's. But they have since said no, nothing to do with us. I mean, I could accept a situation where they said they were responsible for the path, particularly if they did something about it, the brick path, but, uh, but that they weren't responsible mm. for the for the, the gravel. That's and, what they're saying. And, and I, I think that's a reasonable. Compromise, particularly we can persuade them to do something about the brick park. The oddity, I mean, that, that makes a limited amount of sense. You'd think normally the path would run along the road rather than along the wall, but be that as it may, the curiosity to my mind is if they're willing to take the path on part of it. The same brick path goes behind church stores and the other houses, and it also 
Uh, but that was, according to Yvonne, once regarded as a path until they themselves decided it wasn't, that it's not on the definitive map of POWs. Yeah. But the other end of it actually goes through what are now the front gardens of the cottages indeed. where Mallet used indeed. to live. And that's, and and that's it, that's, that is definitely going to be a dilemma. I, 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 <laughs> so, I mean, it's really <laughs> weird if KCC thinks I, I, it is theirs. I think we, we, we fucked up one at the outset and you know, then, then, then we might not be able to get them to repair the, the Tony Mallet garden. The, the, the most logical reason for that that I can come up with is that in the mists of time, those front gardens didn't exist, and that really was the path because the road was simply wider in that area. They may be the occupants claimed a bit of yeah. grass birds on their own. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's come back to where we were. The bit that people park on do does the parish council want to make representations to try and get control stroke ownership and therefore take responsibility? Well, given what they once said, if we just go and register it. Given the KCC, we have to show we looked after it for twelve years, which we can't. Why? Well, well we're, 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 we're we're going the, you're going to find the. Well, it's being it's being used by the church for the last twelve years on a regular basis. Yeah, so the so church, church couldn't. That's not the same. No, but it, but it's been it, that could be a possibility, uh, and then and then it's a question of the church applying to the parish council for the tarmacking thereof. I mean, I do in have the a, interest of village amenities like the teachers at the school, because what we don't want to do is to close it off so that it's only for churchgoers. Yeah, that's, that's my view. But I think it's getting into a state now. It really has got quite decrepit. And frankly, it's, I think we were very, very lucky that Roger didn't fall on the back of his head or something, yeah. given the fact he's a very unwell individual. And if he died, then, then where would the finger of blame be pointing out? First of all, it would have been the church next to the church and then we'd be going back to KCC mm. and saying aha it's your path and the estate of Roger King's now going to sue you I mean to me it, it's important that something happens because it is getting it's, it is very dangerous particularly in this weather well, so uh, is it in our interest to take it on yeah. I, I certainly agree in our interest to take on the gravel bit mm, two different things Path and, and, and don't forget, Roger, tri Roger fell on the brick path. Brick path. Yes, but, yeah. yes, I know. Uh, uh, but he could have equally as fallen on, on the non-brick path. Maybe, there. I mean, yes, that's a matter of inches, if you we, like. We, we could, but it KCC, could be a bargaining tool with KCC to say, look, this is dangerous. We would be prepared to take on the gravelly bit, but we want you to take on the brick bit. Well, that's <coughs> not the gravel bit, isn't it? <coughs> They're saying gravel bit. Isn't this? I know, but we would, parish council would be prepared to take it on. <coughs> so they'll say, well, go on then, do it. Isn't that all right, though? Well, it depends yeah. on whether the council wants to do that. That's what we're trying to get a, a view of. I mean, I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of experience of the 11, I thought it was an 11 year rule, you said it's a 12 year rule. 12. But certainly yes. when, I, when I moved to where I went to Potman's Heat, there was a, a hedge and a ditch and a, and a grassy lane. And the farmer there said he owned it, and I believed him. But it wasn't true, um, and it didn't belong on my deed. So there was this grassy lane, which is twice the width of my hand. It's belonged to nobody. And I spoke to the solicitor. And if you can demonstrate, I planted trees on it and all sorts of things. And he said, if you can demonstrate you've been using it for eleven years, which I think we can do, because that person is parking their cars on it, and that's parish council use. It's worth a try, maybe. The school, yeah, the school's been say, parking on it. School use. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, 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 and then, then he said, if you can demonstrate that and get a get a, a statement from you and from me, his solicitor, the nice solicitor, then it's yours. And that's what I did. Yes, yeah, that's what they said. And it's interesting because if the, if KCC objects to that, then de facto they'd have to take yeah. it. Well, that's <laughs> true. I, there is a uh, I, my experience is slightly different, but when the PLA was. I, I'm trying to read backwards into this. When the PLA was registering its ownership of the bed of the River Thames, which it was while I was still there, we then found out, to our lack of knowledge, that the BP refinery at the time owned their frontage, as it were, in the river. I mean, we got it all from the days of uh, Richard the Lionheart uh, various, via various intermediaries. But BP could show they did own that bit. Now, why did they do that? Presumably because, and we didn't know, 
we put it into the land registry and said, we're registering this bit of our land, we've got it for the last 900 years, and they presumably either advertised it in the London Gazette or something, or, or, or went to BP and said, do you have a counterclaim? And BP said, yeah, here's our document. So if we did put in for the bit of car park, I'm thinking of this as I go, the land register, and said we've got it for 12 years, all of you, they may say, okay, let's ask KCC what they think, let's ask the church what they think, not us, we get it. Maybe that would happen. In other words, we wouldn't be able to prove it, but they would find that no one else wanted to prove it either. Just a thought. I'm just scratching my head, and if the church was asked, do they want to be the owners of it? I suppose they might say they did. Well, fine then. <laughs> but I don't know, you know, because we wouldn't want the cost of dealing with it. Right. So I'd rather get KCC to repair it and then claim it. The pathway is not listed, is it? Well, I don't know. It probably should be. Well, well yes, hang on. I don't think it is no. from past discussions. So what have, we've got a free reign <coughs> to speak on what's done there. I mean, to my mind, it, I can't see any reason why, why either the church or the parish council wouldn't want to take the whole thing over and make it fit for purpose. It is an amenity that's You're used now by the public. the past. Yeah, the whole lot. Because frankly, if I was on KCC highways right now, with all the pressures on where we spend our money, the last <coughs> time, if I could get rid of the pathway and the upkeep costs of all that, because it needs to be done in a matter of urgency because someone's had a, a, a near fatal accident, to paraphrase it, you get rid of that liability. Well, when, I, when, when I <coughs> had a conversation this very morning with the nice lady at KCC and explained there had been a potentially very serious accident, her, her approach changed dramatically. And mm -hmm. she said, well, that makes it totally different. It would do. Yeah, yeah. it would do. Totally different. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, I, I'm waiting for four... So maybe the approach is, would you like us to take it on? And there's transfer fee, which actually happens to cover the renovation of the footpath. The, the ideal outcome, from my perspective, would be a joint ownership between the church and the PCC. Uh, sorry, the, the, and the PC. A joint ownership, but I doubt that's possible. Well, condominium, as they say in legal standards. Condominium. <laughs> I, I think, Jeremy, I, I did express my concern that the, the very slap happy response that we got when we mm. brought up this problem. Uh, I think it was ill thought out. Where some of us don't really believe that they actually bothered to come along and look. Sure. They just said we got no money, blah, blah, blah. So I would like to see a, a well-scripted response from the parish council um, pointing out the near, well, the near fatal, whatever you like to call it, accident that has actually occurred. Um, and as I say, push it back at them. Um, I mean, the, the letter was illiterate, and um, I just think sure. someone, and I gather someone said another one's arrived. Mm -hmm. the, the same is the aim here, John, in your reading and other people's perhaps, is the aim here, there's a <coughs> fork in the road, <laughs> are we saying to KCC in that context, if we do that, um, we want more action than just saying, go away, we haven't got any money. It's got to be sorted out and, and, and push them to do that. Or are we actually thinking slightly laterally and saying, Paul's view, this is a, a problem. You have got a liability, da -de -da -de -da. It's obviously not very satisfactory. Would you like the parish council to take over the responsibility for that path, which is hardly a highway path, it's set back? 20 yards, um, but you'd need to give us a bit of money to get it sorted out in the first place. For well, I would have thought that would be the second mm -hmm. aspect. But well, not the preference. preference the first, first preference one. is mm -hmm. to tell yeah. them to do it. Okay. You yeah, know, I agree. It's dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would you object if I, I did an, an email this morning and I can ping it through to you all now if you would like to see what I said? You've actually sent one in. You have, yes, and then you can read it now. Uh, as on behalf of you personally, or on behalf of the parish well, council? On behalf of the me, parish council, and, and and church. Yeah, I'd like to have personally. I'd have liked to have seen it before. Sorry, it, it has gone already, but I can. Yeah. We can uh, I, I did it on behalf of myself, really, or the church. But I'll send it through to you now, so you can read it. 
Well, that's that's fine. And, you know, I, mean, I think, I think what you're actually saying is you sent it on behalf of the church, as the church, um, you know, came from you, which is fine. But it actually, the follow-up needs to come from the parish yeah, council. I, I, I agree. Uh, well, I think John's well, right. Well, deal, we'll deal with that. We could also just get on and register our ownership. Well, 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 I did discuss it with her on the other day, and she said it's always nice to have a member of the parish council taking on responsibilities. <laughs> yes. Well done, Amanda. Yes, do it to lead on it. Like to turkeys and bacon for Christmas. Yeah. 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 You can't do something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, 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 you can see I've sent it to you. You can read it. If you don't like it, that's I'm sorry. But I, well, I think I think John's point about doing things in, I in that order. I, get, I think also if 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 a report is is submitted as this individual claims to have done, we should request to see a copy of it. Because I'm assuming this isn't just him thinking he's been and then writing something that springs to mind even though he can't spell. I mean, to my mind, if you, if you make that sort of judgment as, as someone from Highways or KCC, there should be a, a, a log, a written report. And that would actually flush out whether the person indeed visited the site. Wouldn't be surprised. No, exactly. But I think, I think getting up, going at it from the point of view of the, of the near fatal accident and deal with that, get them to take it on board. And frankly, if they come out and, and did rectify the path, um, it's a much bigger job actually to relay that whole thing. It's a very big job. It's yeah. a huge job. But, uh, but if we could get them to do that and say, right, the deal is, you know, we'll take it over, but you need to hand it over in fit, a fit condition, then sort it out. Then, then we can deal with the car parking or the, or the rough area and, and take ownership of that. Maybe we could send in some photographs because it is very mm. uneven in yes. places mm. with, with the tape measure, you know, like we do with the potholes. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, I sent them a photo. I always send photos of mm. the problem. <clears throat> so I never worry. You know, that's They've what they had. had yeah. they, they were applying to you saying they'd been out. Yes. And then I spoke to the lady and they sent an email response to that call saying they'd been out today. I don't believe them. They just sent me the same email that they sent to you. Mm -hmm. So they haven't been up twice, but they've claimed they've been up twice. See what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, 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 it's not porky there. Right, decision then on what happens next. Um, John wants ACC to be pressed harder uh, to do mm -hmm. something about the path. Mm. Alan, yeah. I've just read Alan's um, note which went to them, which was as a councillor, not council, and um, PCC member and resident, I think it says, uh, and implores them to do something because it's making a mess of the church. Um, what? What's to be done? Mm, I think we ought to press the council hard. Yes. First. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Is that, is that something, John, you can draft some paragraphs for Yvonne on? Yes, I, having, uh, well, I'll read through what Alan's already sent. Um, did you say you got an immediate response to that saying? No, that I, I, I rang first. Yeah. And then I said, shall I send an email? email? She said, yes. Okay. I got a response to my call. I don't believe... Not I, to your email. I don't believe I have had a response to the email. I think perhaps I would just... Wait for a day or two and see if something comes. Well, I don't out. mind if you felt you wanted. I mean, you, I'm sure I've missed some aspects, but if you filed in and said something else or we've gone to that, would be well, I, all right. As I say, I think you know, just give them a day to see if there's a responsible response, and if not, the matters are then brought to the full council and yeah. the chairman. I'm happy to script something, but it would go under Jeremy's yeah. thing, heavyweight. Uh, yeah, well, I'm happy with that. If you think that's best thing, okay. Fine. Fine. We'll make what progress we can. Uh, personally, I, I don't. I mean, I've raised it years ago, but the council didn't want to take it on because of the path. I don't see why the council shouldn't take on the labour part. Um, well, I know, I know over the years, Alan, it might have been before your time. The PCC have always refused to take on that because of the cost. Mm. The, well, the car park bit, not the car. The, the PCC, yes. Yes, but the PC, because of the cost of what it would cost them to do indeed. the work. But then the PC, I think, is possibly saying that it might be prepared to take on the cost of the gravel bit. Well, mm. the PC will decide that if the, if the mm. It's decide. the cost of the work mm. they were concerned mm. yes. about. Mm. Yeah. I mean, looking after, but looking I don't think after the church that, can afford to do it. 
it's looking after labour. It's not no. necessarily a big job. It's a, mostly, in most cases, to do with getting some crushed stone and rolling it in again. And then when it gets mm. more pot, you do it again. Have you got my email? Have you got my email? Not unless you just sent it. I have. Oh. Have a look at it. It mentions that issue. Okay. That's sort of where we are. Um, correspondence. The one that's listed here is Katie Sobolowska. Caring all together in Romney Marsh. That's CARE, C A R E, who have the coffee uh, mornings here twice a month. And they also organise two trips out twice a year, or they do two trips a year out mm -hmm. for lunch somewhere. Um, it's a significant organisation, it's a charity. It's been going for 20 years, I think I've heard. Um, they have written to Yvonne and I saying, would we consider giving them a donation? Because they pay to hire the hall oh, here, no. and uh, oh, I thought they were asking for businesses. Yeah, they, they're like, well, they they want money. I mean, they're asking for ideas of businesses. But yes, you're right. I jumped ahead a little bit and mm -hmm. thought, well, we do give donations. <coughs> this is definitely the one that happens in here is definitely for our residents. So there's no there's no question about that. They're paying. What did we figure out? It was. 300 a year. 300. 300. 300. Yeah. 300. I reckon if, if jumping ahead we were to give something, I would ask Dax if he would give a bit, you know, 50 pound a year or something. I don't imagine we're going to get anything from anyone else in the village. Is the um, Isle of Oxney Business Club still going? The Mike Barber's was. Yeah, yeah, not that I'm aware of. It's one that generally started out years ago. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm heard of it. I just wonder whether we steered her uh, towards them. I'm not aware. As well as, I mean, you know. Do they just pay for the two two Thursdays? Thursdays. Yeah, yeah. just their own Just yeah. the two of the four. Yeah. And yeah. um, yeah. what they take doesn't cover that cost. It all goes into a pot. What they take here mm -hmm. yeah. goes into a pot. And that helps to fund their trips out for their yeah. summer lunch. So it does lunch. They don't, they don't treat it individually. Right. It all goes into. Into the pot. Yes. So they don't know if they're making a profit or a loss. No. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, because I said that you know, I mean, I do the sim I do the similar sort of thing. Although I don't do cake, they get cake at this. Mm. I don't do cake. Um, and I was able to give a hundred pounds to the you know, Jeremiah Greenland. Admittedly, I only take money out for the hire of the hall and mm. the coffee. I have to put in there other stuff, but... Okay, so we're not paying for our own coffee morning, the hire of the hall. You're taking that out of the proceeds? Yes, the money I take, I charge a pound for a coffee and mm. a biscuit and food. And from that, I take out the hire of the hall and the coffee. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And so anything left over... Yeah. Yeah goes to Jeremiah, and over 11 months I was able to give £100. Okay. Do we know what happened? The, the, way, the way the care works, care system works, who is the treasurer here, and the way that works is that their central organisation pays the hire of the hall, but they get that from donations that they pick up more widely, other charities or whatever, or maybe I watch, I don't know. They get money to, towards that. But they would like, for obvious reasons, to pick up a bit more. So can they get any donations here? And I'm taking the view that with something that is giving a benefit to our own uh, residents, and it's going, going very well now. I came on, well, I don't know if you were here, were you here last time? I came the one in the last couple of weeks, and there was 20 odd people here. Mm. Just like I had absolutely. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Mm. But you're not doing it all the time, they're doing a couple of times as well. Yes, anyway, the question is, I mean, one way or the other, it, are we interested in giving them a donation? Although they didn't ask us directly, they asked for business sponsorship, and if they did, I would ask if Dax would put a chip in as well. Look, it looks as though, actually, that would be self-sufficient without our donation. That's my point. Yes, right. And what, what are the arrangements for the fourth coffee morning of the month? That's Jean and Judy do yeah, it. And, and are they self-sufficient? I they don't know. They give me their um, the money for the hall hire. So I pay that over to the village hall. 
So none, none of it goes, none of that actually goes through the parish council because of, obviously we can't make yeah. um, a profit as such. So it's not the parish council giving Jeremiah in a way. It's I'm doing it from mm -hmm. what I'm the mm -hmm. coffee morning I run. Mm. So I don't know what the money that Jeff, what the Judy and Judy I take. think it goes to WI. Well, WI do the fifth, fifth one. one. When there's a fifth one, although they the don't w. necessarily. Well, I've done a couple, <laughs> yes, <laughs> when they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but normally the WI would do a fifth. And I just get them, you know, they give me their yeah. £10 pounds for the hire of them. The and the money that goes to Jeremiah is that do the village benefit from that yes. charity? Yes. Yeah. In what way? Yeah. I will yes. tell you more about Jeremiah, how that works. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, I, was, I was concentrating on something else for yes, a <laughs> what, what were you asking? The money that people give to the Jeremiah charity, no. how do villages benefit from that? There's a distribution committee that meets in November and we struggle, but we work hard to identify were the distribution avenues, which might be to an individual. Um, for instance, this year we sponsored um, a pupil at the local school who I think has um, special needs requirements and felt it was felt he would benefit greatly from music therapy, and we put in a sizable contribution. We were fortunate this year in that we had a sizable donation into the fund um, from a parishioner, which helped, helped us along. We knew it's not a wealthy charity, mm. and um, and there are sometimes it's not appropriate for money to be given. So we quite often put together a hamper, and um, historically we've done that from Jemson. But this year we decided to do it through Dax. That was slightly sensitive because he's a member of the distribution committee, but we talked about that and looked at it carefully and made it such that that wasn't going to be a conflict. And I think we probably this year identified um, 10 villagers who should rightly be in receipt of something, mm -hmm. either a hamper or, or, or a financial. Mm. And I mean, it, it, it doesn't change people's lives, but I do have to say that I think over the years we have saved a couple of lives by intervening in one way or another mm. before Christmas. Good. Mm. See what I mean? Yeah. Good. Um, well, I mean, Sally delves a, a, in a, a sensible area, which is making those comparisons. Um, the underlying point you're picking up, Sally, is that the care here could be self-sufficient mm -hmm. in terms of running their coffee, but the amount they're picking up, they then direct towards the two trips a year to help subsidise them. So when I say trips, I think it's a lunch and a... I don't it's know a lunch at the garden centre. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> just something to... Because the whole point of care, of course, is to bring the older people together, give them chat, company, something to do, something to live for next week, you know, whatever. And, you know, therefore they, those things fit in quite well to not just come here for their tea and cake. I mean, Carl do do other things, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure how much the village benefits from that. Normally. You know, like, um, they'll help you fill out things like attendance allowance forms, that type of thing. Oh, wow. And support, you know, one-to-one -one support in house. And like I say, I'm not sure how much the village benefits from that. Jeremy, if I could just um, apologise, but I have a very distressed wife at home. We've had no electricity in the house for two hours. It's not a general cut, so there's something wrong within the house. Okay. And um, I know Linda sit around for a little bit more than she does. Um, Do you know, like obviously, I, I would love to be here for the remaining programme, but um, I, I apologise to everybody, but I think I just ought to go. Can, can I have to start? Do, do they get a reduction the hire? It's sort of a charity, isn't it? Can, do they get a reduction? Do they get a reduction in the hiring? In the hiring of the... I would say, they actually get 
to pay more than I do. I'm not sure whether they have it for longer than I do, maybe. I think they pay £12.50 and I pay £10. So. Although their fees are going up. You know. Because I presume it looked out of the out of village rather than mm. yeah. Are they a charity? Could yes, they are. They're charitable state. I mean, I think one of the other things like cheaper. any charity, uh, every charity has got, uh, has got core costs, and that's their biggest difficulty. Because sometimes mm. when they get funding, it's restricted funding, and and I completely understand why they're trying to get some sort of funding for their core costs. You know, they've got a, a very small, but they have got a, a very needed uh, central organisation. They do a whole, it's very difficult to know some of the individual people in this village who are helped because they don't broadcast that, you know, and, and it wouldn't be appropriate if they did. So I think that, the, you know, if I was working in a car, I'd be doing exactly this, reaching out to communities, seeing what, you know, I mean, they're not asking for, for a huge amount. The total is 300. If we can get one or two businesses or people in the village to sort of co support that. Um, you know, maybe we do a matching fund or we start off with okay. something. Are we, are but, but the key thing to me, what I'm hearing, is that twice a month people in this village benefit from that exactly. event. And that yeah. ticks the box very strongly for me. Well, are we willing then to make a donation ourselves, irrespective of whether I get anything else from uh, uh, DAX? I mean, is the parish council willing? You've got a donations budget, which I think we've got money in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't spent any six hundred pounds. Might we give one hundred and fifty or something like that? Yes, and I would expect Jean and Judy to come forward with their cap next. Because if I was sitting in their position, that's exactly what I'd do. If I knew the parish council had given me. But it depends where that's going. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. going to the charity mm -hmm. who are providing this service. Yeah, it's yeah. a bigger organisation. I mean, it's not denigrating work that you or Judy or anyone does on that. I, I'd agree with Jeremy. I would say that £150 is reasonable. Is reasonable. And then that's you can say to Jack, can you match it? Are you support? Are you recommending that? Yeah, yeah I think to move it I'll on. support you. Right. <laughs> Please. Colin's going to go um, yeah. So 150, can we do? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Of course, there is this other new charity in the village, the Judy Mary Fund. Yes. Which is, I mean, which you, some some will know about, some yes. don't. Yeah. And it's, it's still in its embry, em, 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 embryonic stage, but it's designed to I think, probably help, particularly children educationally, with it is indeed, possibly, yeah. possibly yes. music and that sort of thing. But at some stage, I'm no doubt be asking us for money. No, no, the money's actually there's being put in. There's money yes. going in on that one. That's, money, that's the other door. That, there's, money, there's, there's money going there's in the fund from the benefactor. Yeah, sure, indeed. Okay. Next bit of correspondence is BT, Yvonne. Um, yes, you've all seen. I forwarded the response from um, the chairman's letter. I did get a phone call from the chap first, who sort of explained it. And then sent the email that you've all got. So. Mm -hmm. Which answered all the questions we hadn't asked and didn't answer the ones we had. But anyway, yeah. Alan says that his broadband has yeah. been great ever since. He's an experienced engineer on the 20th time of asking. Yeah. 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 It's all done. Things are improved. No, I, I haven't got BT correspondence on my agenda. No, I haven't. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's just it's coming to me. Oh, right. oh, right. oh, right. Yeah, no, oh, no, right. this, no, this is an addition <laughs> because I just thought. That's why I had to come under correspondence, although it's old oh. stuff, mm. because otherwise it leaves it for a month. And there was no decision to be made, so I thought you would just, just you you'd just like to. And I did forward it to um, Wilma, who you know raised the question in the first place, so All she right. has All made right. a copy. You know, and you also know. today, this well, today, <coughs> yesterday, um, just to say that our website um, is now fully compliant with the new, the new, well it's WCA, WCAG, which is the, um, what we have to do for disabilities so that, dis, you know, all that, so that everybody can understand and read out. Read out. And get them read out. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it, yes, but it's up to, oh, yeah, the current access, accessibility guidelines. So that was just, right. so that's just another notification, so okay. you know. That we are compliant. 
Okay. Clark's expenses, you all had a copy of them, 75 yeah. 63. Yeah. Um, the Christmas um, meeting refreshments been added on now because Yvonne found the bills. No, I shouldn't. Yeah. 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 But you haven't charged for the <laughs> No, because I can't. I, I mean, the others, I could see what I paid. What I paid, but I obviously mince pies no longer. So, no, I haven't charged you for the mince pies. No, very good of you. Thank you. We really enjoyed them. Okay, is that agreed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, good. Um, working party reports, caretaker? Well, I see he spent a lot of time in the cemetery clearing the yeah, graves. Yeah. He's done such, such a good job. Um, you know, on the left hand side, he's, mm. is he going to walk all the way down there? Yes. That's, that's a big job, a big task. Oh, he's done terribly well. I don't see him very often, but if you do, do see him, I'll try. I do any grand brambles. Right, the financial monthly transaction statements. Um, Okay, we have to get the uh, December one because it was the first time that we had the um, Lloyds Bank statement to reconcile. It was just the and dates. The Jan they one. That everything else was the same, the amounts were the same, it's just the dates that we didn't have. Okay, last. right. Does anyone have any queries about any of them? No. No, 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 so can I sign that? Yep. Yes. Okay. And then the caretaker one is just the part of the bigger one. No, we've got January's. You had January. You've got just December's. Mm. Then you had January's. Which you will note, once again, it isn't fully reconciled because I haven't had uh, the CCLA yeah. statement, and they've got a problem, so they will send it as soon as, yeah. soon as they get it. Hopefully only a computer problem, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily they had already sent me the amount that we were going to have, so I could include it. But can you ask CCLA if they can change the statement date, so it fits in with your calendar? Well it does, it should do, 31st. Oh, Okay. Yes. The amount goes in on the right. Okay. Early, I just, I just, and then that's why I'm saying I had that. Right yeah. I had that back in January yeah. when they sent me the December statement. They yeah. sent me that. So hence I knew. It's good to see the dividend uh, rolling in. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Right. Um, now the next thing then is the budget. I was a bit. Curious, Yvonne, why the caretaker scheme didn't have budgeted receipts? Did I misunderstand something? No. Yes, because it doesn't go into our normal. But you've taken the costs out, so it's yes, it just consistent. Yes. It doesn't work with the. This is our. We're talking about our budget and we don't budget for it. But obviously, because I, because I used to keep it separate. So yeah, I was it used separate. to be completely separate. Yes. yes. But now, but it gives you an idea. <laughs> Really? Indeed. Why, why don't we start, now we include them all together, why don't we include them all together, I suppose is the question. There may be a deeper answer to that, to think through. Well, only the, the budget, the figures that I give you, when, oh, we, do, oh, when, we, when we do the precept, That's we come up with a budget. Sure. And, and so obviously the caretaker's up. out of that, that's why it's got the £4,000 within that. Because that's how I've been yeah, this right. go. But now, but no. I can't. But I haven't. We haven't got a budget for the caretaker, yeah. so it means, I mean, just taking it um, at face value, you know, um, we budgeted thirty-five thousand for the precept. We actually got in sixty-six thousand because of the caretaker. The reason is because we didn't budget for the caretaker right. in this place. And that's, that's sort of slightly yeah. odd. But it gives you everything else and that's right, yeah. giving you all a breakdown yeah, as well so that, that you can yeah. see. I can give you another break. I think break it does, yes. Yes. Which, yes. I thank you for sending this. I don't think that is a value for anybody other than yourself. But I, I don't think still we've got the other one quite right. But that's not for a discussion here really. Um, that was just a question. I wondered why it wasn't there. You explained why it isn't there. Mm. The question then becomes what should it be? Do it well, and on this was, a, if I read it correctly, that the actual payments are significantly lower than the budget. Uh, indeed, yes. So that, to me, is, is yes. 
I mean, it, it's substantially lower. Uh, and, and so, is that, am I reading that correctly? Well, that one, we're one, one is issue. Is it a calendar issue? It's a calendar issue. Okay. Because Yvonne, that's the thing that it, we keep talking about and we never quite come together on. We always are, show, when we're showing this, until we get to the end of the year, we're always looking at the year-to-date expenditure mm -hmm. against the full year's yes, budget. Thank you. Yes. And yeah. in my experience, anywhere commercially, the budget's always broken down. Uh, oh, okay. So, and so that doesn't happen mm -hmm. in that case right. in yeah. that way. So in actual fact, when I read the budget column, that's for the whole year. Yes, yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's the year, exactly. year today. Yeah. Oh, now, right, got it. I think yeah. that probably, and, I, and this is Yvonne have had, and I have had a few discussions, uh, and she's obviously the expert, but there's probably a way within Scribe somewhere to calendarise the budget, but it's not something that you've managed to do or find yet, is it? In other words... Yes, I do. It, when it, you it do is all there, but it doesn't produce a report that... We'll show you. I suspect it does, but I mean, I might be wrong. I mean, in other words, take a good example. You actually pay the insurance, you know, the £600 insurance you pay in May, I think. But let's just say it was in August. If, and it's every year in August you pay £600. If these were commercial reports, then in July it would say budget nothing, paid nothing. In August it would say budget 600 pay 610 and then that would run through the rest of the year because you'd know when you were going to pay it. Obviously, if it's a salary, it's just divided by 12, and so on. But I, I, I understand, I'm not knocking this, I understand that you've never found that place in Scribe. And maybe they don't do it. Mm -hmm. But commercially, you know, I think anywhere we've been would always have had that. But at the moment, it works for... Uh, what, yeah. what you have to do is a bit of a sort of a, a quick yes. mental job of saying, OK, uh, so much, it's so much. Insurance, for instance, budget eight hundred fifty. Yeah. Actual eight hundred fifty-seven. Exactly, because we've gone past that year, yeah. past that date in the year. Uh, we, we, there, there's just a lack of understanding of what I'm trying to say and what Elon is mm -hmm. what's in there much better. We, we just not quite, yeah. and we don't need to keep no. everybody's time going tonight. But that's Paul's. That's the basis of Paul's problem. We've underspent the budget because we've still got a few months to go. Okay. Yeah, right. No, no, I understand. No. No, but, but in essence, Yvonne, we're saying we're in good shape. Okay. Yes. No, that's the yeah. caretaker scheme is yeah. tight. Yeah. But okay. the, uh, yeah. the council okay. as a whole is good. Thank you. Right. Good. Um, where do we get to here? So, um, the three quarterly budget statements deferred from the last meeting, that's the one we've just been looking mm -hmm. at. Yeah. Does everyone, do I need to sign that? No. I don't think I did it. No. Yeah. Is everyone happy with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Discussed? <coughs> right. Um, We've received two decisions. The first one very uh, encouraging. The inspector dismissed the appeal for two houses behind 1617 Lloyd's Green. Um, and he made an interesting comment on what he would have said about the track had he been considering it, but he didn't. Mm. And now the land between behind the same bit of land to erect one dwelling. We don't know why, but it was withdrawn, presumably because they were advised that they weren't going to get it. Yes, I, I make that supposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I've also had one, had the beaches has come in as well, as agreed that was the proposed northeast extension. Okay. Which on the boat room and the open porch has Good. been granted. Do you have any update you can share with us tonight on the new land? Uh, no, but I have, we'll have one if it's soon. Soon, yeah. soon, yes, okay. Understood. Understand. Well, when I think of it, could be quickly asked, Johnny, did you get anywhere with the conservation? I, have, the, I haven't got back from them yet. I'm going to say no about it now. Um, <laughs> it's my intention, I've found a, a named officer who I think is responsible, so I'm going to ah, try them. Lovely, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good, that would be helpful. We discussed that before. Mm, that's why I thought happy to mention about it. Absolutely right, yes. Own spaces. Um, and nothing new to report? POWs? I'm kind of with you. Sorry. <laughs> Open spaces. 
I said nothing new to report. Oh, yes, I know. No, but you obviously <laughs> haven't been up on coronation field and spotted it's got the new golf post up there. Ah, right. Well, there you are. Sorry, I haven't, <laughs> been, I haven't had a game of football for a while. <laughs> it's, it's the weather, <laughs> isn't it? Um, sorry. Thank God for that. I, 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 you, 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 there's no reason at all you shouldn't interrupt me and I'm saying the wrong thing. I just thought we could lead by example to use the adult <laughs> enter- enter- exercise equipment up there. We so we should the use gold pants. <laughs> I'm always terrified that somebody might photograph me while I'm doing it. The <laughs> 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 yes. Well, I feel I ought to bring to attention the, 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 the uh, uh, emotional uh, comments on next door, um, yeah. um, opposite uh, Lee's riding school, if I can call it that. Way post nursery drive. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, way post. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, I just feel so sorry for Joe Terry, who just replaced mm-hmm. the tyre and then shredded it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a huge... I mean, in fact, it's very silly. Its first cousin is outside my, my driveway, but because that's in the middle of the road, it's about that deep, that mm-hmm. wide, and about that long. You only hear it, effectively, when lorries go by, and it's just disintegrating, but I haven't even reported it yet, because I just think that there are, there are others that are more important. But, that one, I'm presuming, has been reported. It must be on the system. I don't know. They, they know how to do one. it. Yeah, they do exactly the instruction. Yeah. Some uh, of them have reported it on next door. Yeah. I, I reported it myself today yeah. on next door. Mm. Yeah. On, on, on the highway mm. system. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's an obvious thing to say, but the recent weather has caused all sorts of yeah. um, uh, problems. Um, the road down past Nicholas, the Blackwall Bridge. You just my advice was you stop. I always remember that if it's a narrow road or something like that, if you stop and someone hits you, then they're at fault because they're hitting you as a stationary vehicle. Yes. Uh, don't try and sort of rush past it. But the side of the road, they're absolutely razor sharp. Uh, it's, it's all full of it. I don't know what we can do apart from state the obvious, which is if, it, if it's there, report it. Mm. I don't know if there's a kind of... Then you can show me, is there, is there a sort of later state? Are they getting round to filling stuff? Because normally they're quite quick. I mean, by our pub round there... It's all sinking. Mm-hmm. The, square the ones they did before are sinking again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is there, is there a general thought on, on what's going on? Are they fighting a completely losing battle? Well, it's KCC, so. I, I know, I know, I know but just, just on the general kind of. They are fighting through. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think with where he here, Mike would tell you that the budget situation there is not good, etc. They do have, and I have been sent in confidence, a list of improvement works they are planning. And I will yeah. um, share those around. I suspect you possibly have them as well. Well, I had a strange one. A really weird one with loads of stuff. Loads of things on it, including Pound Lane, Yeah. which has been done. Yeah. So it's weird that they've sent it, and it's... I need to go through it. About March, sort of, March 20, it, yes. After yeah. March 24. <coughs> this is the work they're going to do mm. after March 24. Pound lanes on it. It's probably going to get done again. Well, there are a few words from me if they do. <laughs> but if you get a particularly bad one and you report it and you have a reference number, just send it to me. I've got the portfolio holder over at Kent on, on speed dial. I'm more than happy okay. to <laughs> fill his inbox. That's, with that's very, very, very kind. The other thing they seem to have fallen by the wayside, excuse the pun, <laughs> um, is, is on, on the, the map that shows where. Temporary traffic lights and yeah, road network. Yeah, it, yes. just, it doesn't yes, seem. It used to be pretty good, to be honest, mm. but it seems to be, you know, mm. taken by surprise. Yeah, that's a. I just went up on Ham Street today and found a road yes. closure up at Bovis's in again. That's yeah. right. Mm. I got it. You, you don't there. seem to get those either now, do you? Because we, the street was closed last yes, week. Yes, yeah. the good Today the road right. was closed between Ivan and no. Mm. us. No. They don't um, always tell us. It's weird. I've yeah. started putting the ones I do get on Facebook so that people see them, but I'm not getting all of them. No, I've got them on, on uh, next door. When yeah. I, get them. I mean, presumably permits still have to be issued. Yes, but often very short notice. Yeah. What I heard at the highway seminar was that when it's South East Water or any of the utilities, mm. they put the diversion signs up mm. and then they tell KCC yeah. what they've done. Then KCC go out and check that the diversion signs are correct, the routes they're running are correct. Mm. That's why it isn't. Mm. But they do the, they start the work before they take, tell KCC. So, 
Yeah, so that's why people say to me, so why is it closed? <laughs> well, I don't get told till the following day. So that's why. I wonder if, if you tell this. Uh, again, you, you can't ever tell people enough, can you? But I wonder if we, and it, you, this might be on there, so I might be sort of sticking my head above the parapet, of course, here, but is there a, a, is there a page or a piece on our website that says if you find a pothole, report it and give the, the, the link? Is that there? Yes. Yes. Right. Go, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I, I think it, it might be an idea, if I might suggest, to, to, to repost that on next door. Because do potholes is a is a sort of Yes, don't we uh, but you can't tell people enough about these things. You've put stuff on next door before. Yeah, and yeah. the yeah. outlook. That's what yeah. we are going to do yeah. on your report. But we were going to do it last time if you didn't. No, didn't. To remind to remind people if it goes yes. in the outlook. When we add it to your Pothole corner. Yes. Pothole. <laughs> um, can I also bring up here? Um, you will remember that Nicholas reported all the problems down. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it was said it was Mr. Nunn's field where he put his barn and the ditch. Yeah. Um, I checked with KCC and obviously landowners, um, which is responsibility, and they sent me their um, rough area owners mm. little leaflet. So I wrote to Mr Nunn and I um, said he needed to clear his stitch and um, sent him the form so that the mm. leaflets are knew all about it. I got an email back to say that it's a problem with southern water and I went down just to check last Wednesday after walking, I went down to have a look, see how it's doing and Mr Nunn actually came along, stopped and we had a chat. And actually, if you look within his ditch, there are manhole covers for the sewage pipes. So he cannot actually dig out a ditch that's got the main sewage pipes mm. within it. Mm. He has, and he sent. He also sent me photos of the manhole covers that have obviously um, been raised, and there was paper and yeah, all around it. He reported it to Southern Water. Southern Water had been out and he's met with them. They came out the first time, went to somewhere completely different. So he thought they hadn't turned up, but they, they thought they had. He met them with it the second time they came out um, and they have admitted that yes, it is their problem. Um, they, so they, they will arrange, so from his email, uh, they will arrange for the sewage to be cleared up but first they have to contact the environment agency to get permission, which they will do. Um, and Mr Nunn says he knows that it's not going to solve the problem in the long term, and every time we have periods of heavy rain, the sill will overflow again. It needs replacing with a bigger main, which is what we know. But the problem is that with the, with the older properties within the village, where they don't have the downpipes that yeah. go, you know, you've got us that go into a separate system, it goes into the main sewage. Yeah. And of course, this yeah. is where we've got all the older yeah. mm -hmm. property. So once you get that, by the time it gets down to there, mm -hmm. it's out. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it is within his ditch, which means he can't actually... No. Which is crazy. So I did get... Um, I have got a name um, now. It doesn't make any difference. Um, KCC Drainage Man, so I'm now going to go back and send him these photos. <coughs> so you know... It's, it's their problem because, as well, because the water that overflows from these ditches runs down the road and erodes the road edge. Yes. So it's in their interest to get onto southern mm. water as mm. well because it's eroding mm. their roads, mm. is the way I was going to play. Well, thank, you, thank you for doing that. That's, mm. I'm sure you'll find the appropriate way oh, of right. informing <coughs> the resident further down the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. And he's, he, he is pleased. Okay. Um, anything else on highways? No. Cemetery churchyard, there's the wooden fence problem. This is something we now think is our job, isn't it? Yes. So I think we've probably got to agree that Yvonne looks into someone who can put it back together again for us at our mm -hmm. cost. <coughs> Remind me which fence that is. It goes alongside, um, it's yeah. on the public right of way goes along past between the cemetery and the orchard okay. on the right hand side yeah. as you yeah. go in as you go down to the gill but right right down the bottom mm. as you start going down the hill it's all falling over and it seems as though whether it was 
it, it was obviously mallets at one stage or other, but mm -hmm. they have now organised things at some stage, whether a long time ago or more recently, that it actually appears to fall into our bit. In the year 2000. Is, yeah. is that something that's within ALF's capability? And it if possibly, it is, but it's could we ask, would you like to earn some extra and do that as a separate project from his responsibilities as caretaker? Because it needs to be done. But we're not. I'd say it's something that yeah. is, we don't actually, within his contract, it's not supposed to be. Completely separate from his, 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 his contract. As, as someone we know and trust who's down there quite a bit. Um, I'll ask him. Yeah, because I would say that, that if, if he could say yes, then... I mean, he did say, that. because we did... I had talks to him about it. And yeah. He said, oh, well, it just needs mm. these bits mm. and that. I, I think yeah. we should ask him and, and pay him the, the going rate for the extra work, if he, if he wishes. Okay. Mm. I'm sure Lee can hold the other end of the post. Sure. All right. okay. The other thing about the... Director's cemetery. There's no sign post to no. sign to no. tell people where the cemetery is. Mm. I know Tobias had a problem finding it when we had our meeting down there, and also apparently recently, I say, when you scatter the ashes or they bury the ashes, whatever you do with the interf, uh, some people couldn't find the cemetery because obviously they haven't had a service first, so... Mm. There used to be a sign, I thought. No. 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 There is a footpath sign that we could attach one to. I always thought that was a cemetery sign. Show Jim how much I've looked at it. Show Jim how much I've looked at it. Maybe I was thinking mm. yeah. of that. We'll, we'll ask it the public rights of waiting before ask, we could attach anything to it. Ask them if we can mm. stick something mm. on their pole. Can we not have a sign on the same pole? Well, that's well, what I just said. I think that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, you want to ask uh, that lot to reply? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the annual parish meeting we have to have in March. April. Sorry, April. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. April. Yeah, it's, April. It's, 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 I'm thinking I'm mixing up the council year and the financial year. Yeah, yeah April, right. Like. So, we need to have a date for that. What we've done before is um, have it before our yeah. normal meeting. Mm. Could do that. Which is on the 9th of April. That sounds like a jolly good idea. What do it? 9th. The 9th of April, of April the second time. Tuesday in April. We tack it on and we'll put it on in advance of our meeting. Yeah. I'd free that day because we like to have a process <coughs> report. I'm returning from holiday mm -hmm. on that day. I hope to be here, but yeah, turn yeah. on. National transport and so on. <laughs> I might not, but I'm intending to come. Are you, are you coming from a different time zone? I missed the first <laughs> one and they've been here since I got all the meeting. How exciting. I do have a committee, but since I've managed to get out of it, it's nice. I've got going to get out of it as well. So. <laughs> So if we're happy with that, are we all happy with that? So 9th of April. 9th of April, with refreshments? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's the order of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just to spread the word. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. So what time do we start with that meeting? Seven. Seven. Yes, you probably know. We normally bring it forward a bit. We'd start with seven. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. We're not going to have a parish council. Yes. That's a small agenda. Yeah. Absolutely. Just uh, put a proposal outside the door, the picture of my face, and just say it doesn't mean my face. No, I was going to put one thing free beer, kindly supported by your own children, you know, get the whole village here. I might get some, Mike usually comes to the so he will get that. Oh, good. I'm going to get the whole village here. I'm going to get the So that's the same day. Mike had a seizure when I. Criticised um, KCC mm -hmm. for their behaviour on the school buses. Uh, at the at the first meeting, when I sat down, he was he got a steam coming out of his ears. How dare I criticise KCC in public? Yeah, but we're all there. Uh, <laughs> much, the much nicer about KCC, isn't it? Okay, yes. I gave up. Um, the next meeting we know about in March, items of information, the defibrillator training, which you all know about. 
Yes, do let me know. I need names. So if you're intending to, there'll be two sessions, one at six. And what time are the two sessions? Obviously six o'clock. Yes, seven thirty. Seven thirty. Unfortunately, I've already got something business. Meetings in London at the end of the day, and I just got to get back to the evening time for the ladies. That's the 14th of March. So, Colin, you'll be going. 14th of March. I know my my assistants going. And then you can teach me (laughs) afterwards, then. I'll give you a demonstration. Yeah. It's after the Ides of March. So, have I got any names before? Because I do. I've got six. Six. What time is your assistant going? Pardon? What time is your assistant going? I don't know. <laughs> she, she, indicated, yeah. she indicated very clearly that she'll be appearing. I need to know. I need well, names. I will let you know. Thank you. Thomas? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. I do I've got a busy time coming up. I don't know where I'm going. You know? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? There's no other items of information on the list. Do you want to raise anything? Not for me, no. 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 So we're all done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, that's all right. Right. You need to be quicker. <laughs> there you go. At least I'm starting. Thank you. Thank you for coming.